The Art Deco Boat Tail Teardrop Coupe lives in the modern era in the Chrysler Crossfire. First introduced as a concept car in 2001, styled by Eric Stoddard and refined by Andrew Dyson, the Chrysler Crossfire was first introduced at the 2001 North American International Auto Show, with production beginning in 2003 for the 2004 model year. The Crossfire would serve as Chrysler's halo car for the duration of its four-year single-generation production run. And today we'll be taking a, t a look at the Sapphire Silver Blue Metallic Crossfire. It features the dark and medium slate gray leather high back bucket seats. The design language of the Crossfire was made to evoke a strong, passionate, and emotional response that polarized the viewers from all angles. The design, especially the coupe, is decidedly art deco in its style. And as you saw from the prices that popped up, they weren't exactly cheap either. And all Crossfires are rear-wheel drive, and this one comes powered with a standard 3.2-liter single overhead cam, 18-valve M112 E32 V6 engine. It creates 215 horsepower at 5,700 RPM, 229 pound-feet of torque at 3,000 RPM. Car and driver tested the Crossfire for 0 to 60 miles per hour in 6.8 seconds, with a 0 to 100 mile per hour time in 17.8 seconds. Quarter mile was reached in 15.1 seconds at 91 miles per hour, with a top speed of around 100, 129 miles per hour. And the Crossfire features a 15.9 US gallon fuel capacity and consumes 4.8 gallons per 100 miles driven, with an estimated total driving range of 334 miles. EPA fuel economy ratings are 19 miles per gallon city, 25 miles per gallon highway, and 21 miles per gallon combined. And the transmission on this car is the $1,075 optional Mercedes-Benz Source 5-speed W5A 335G Tronic Automatic with Winter and Sport Modes. Auto stick sh manual shift capability was also included. Standard transmission was the 6-speed Chrysler NSG 370 manual transmission. And the Crossfire, due to the then-new merger with Daimler, is based largely on the Mercedes-Benz R170 platform that shares 80% of its components from the first-generation SLK Roadster. The Crossfire was manufactured by Carmen and built in Osnabrück, Germany. The first Crossfire was driven off the line on February 3, 2003 by Wolfgang Bernard, and due to slow sales and restructuring plans, Chrysler discontinued the Crossfire after the 2008 model year with the last car rolling off the line on December 17, 2007. And looking around the rear, in my opinion, is where the Crossfire really stands out as a design study. The boat tail shape and with the fastback rear glass and wide fenders evoke a heritage look, reminding some viewers of the 1967 AMC Marlin. Integrated into the rear hatch panel is a driver adjustable rear spoiler operated by a switch mounted in the center console. And the artful, almost sculptural appearance of the Crossfire Coupe is evident in the profile, with the sharp body lines tightly clear in the large 18-inch wheels and its short 94.5-inch overall wheelbase. Overall length is 159.8 inches for both the coupe and convertible, and the boat tail roof converges into a 30s-era teardrop coupe appearance. Alright, and as far as driving is concerned, the Crossfire does drive pretty well. Acceleration isn't as fast as a modern-day... Uh, car, but for the time it was pretty good. As far as driving characteristics, it's a very well balanced car, it seems. Ride overall ride comfort is smooth, uh, with the low profile tires and the uh, stiffer suspension, it is a little bit stiffer riding. 
but the steering and handling is really really good overall feedback is is excellent I believe so overall it's a really good driver's car steering is hydraulically assisted variable rate speed sensitive recirculating ball with a short long arm double wishbone suspension up front and five-point multi-link suspension in the rear wheels are 18 inch seven spoke aluminum with 225 40 ZR18 tires up front and 225 35 ZR18 tires in the rear Brakes are four-wheel ventilated disc with ABS and traction control. Around the front, the Crossfire features a long, low hood reminiscent of vintage roadsters and teardrop coupes of which it is styled after. Carrying the theme in the hood are the six recessed lines in the hood, running parallel to the center character bulge that continues down the entire center line of the car, including the dashboard console inside. Headlamps are halogen projector beam with black bezels and clear lenses. Down below are fog lamps, and front and center is the iconic large egg crate grille framed by the fold-width Chrysler wing badge. Alright, let's take a look inside. We do have keyless remote entry, but we do not have smart key access. It is a switchblade key that is shared with the Mercedes-Benz cars. Satin silver door poles. Nice solid doors open up to a wide entry point with a two-tone leather interior. High back bucket seats feature good lateral support. They are also very comfortable. And then the door panels do feature uh, recessed or integrated airbags, chrome door poles in your speakers. You have storage nets in lieu of mat pockets. You do also have a stainless steel crossfire entry plate. Eight-way power driver and passenger seat. And inside you have headlamps with your parking lamps and fog lamp controls. And taking a closer look at the seats, as stated before, they are high back bucket seats. They are heated. They do not have ventilation. But overall, they're very comfortable and very supportive. All right, and pan through the interior and show more details. As you can see here, nice fluid power assisted steering. Thick rim leather wrap steering wheel. It does not adjust for tilt, but it does adjust for telescoping. You do have the Mercedes-Benz controls with the top uh, cruise control and the lower turn signal stalk. Drivers unfamiliar with the system will almost always confuse the cruise control stalk for the turn signal. Large, clear, three-dial, easy-to-read instrumentation with LCD readouts for outside temperature, odometers, and of course your clock. It also has an integrated service reminder. The dash does feature the central line that runs the entire width or length of the car down the center. And inside, of course, we have tons of satin silver pl uh, plastic. And all controls in here are actually Mercedes-Benz sourced. So you have dual zone climate control. Your round knobs adjust your vent pattern, as well as your fan speed. The two knobs on the outside control your temperature. And the buttons control your air conditioning and airflow. It does have an aftermarket audio system and rows of buttons here that control your heated seats. You've also got your rear spoiler control, your electronic stability program, four-way flashers, your door locks, your anti-tow protection, and of course your passenger heated seat. Little ashtray that comes out. You've also got a uh, passenger side airbag deactivation um, warning and your power window switches as well as your power mirror controls are on the center console. That small little broken looking opening is actually for the cup holder. 
And inside the center console is a nice amount of storage. Overall, the interior of the Crossfire is very sporty, but it's also very comfortable. Outward visibility is actually very good considering the car's profile and shape. And overhead, you have an automatic dimming mirror. You've got Homelink Universal Garage Door Opener, Dome Light Control, and small sun visors, which feature uh, non-illuminated vanity mirrors. Another note, the sun visors actually do not swing out or anything. They just fold down. Due to the design of the car, the luggage area is actually very large, considering the overall size of the car. Access to the luggage compartment is actually very easy due to the wide opening of the hatchback. And inside, the luggage area is decently large with a very deep 7.6 cubic feet of capacity. It is a nice load flat floor with minimal wheelhouse intrusion. It is carpeted and fully lined and insulated. And looking under the floor mat, you see the tool tray, which features a tire inflator kit and jack and tools. There is no actual spare tire in this vehicle. All right, and while we're at it, let's take a quick look at the Crossfire convertible. This is a black clear coat limited convertible from 2008 with a black cloth top, dark slate gray premium leather interior. The engine and transmission are the same as the coupe that we are reviewing, but as one can see, the lines of the coupe seem to work better uh, for the car. Even so, I think the convertible looks really nice. And looking around the rear of the car, and of course along the sides as well, it's hard to see that the coupe and the convertible share the same wheelbase and overall length and width. The convertible does feature integrated roll hoops. It still also has the deployable spoiler and the center-mounted rear exhaust. And looking inside, it's not all that much different from the coupe, obviously, because the interiors are the same as the, uh, the same car. They're also interchangeable with the SLKs. All 
All right, and this does conclude our in-depth walk around look at the Chrysler Crossfire. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, and check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.